Test one, two, three. Check one. Okay. Good evening. We want to welcome you tonight to our Thanksgiving. Normally we do an annual Thanksgiving dinner, but because of the way things are this year, we're doing a night of Thanksgiving and giving God praise for all of his goodness. I do need to, I do need to start with something that's a little bit less uh, spiritual, but kind of needs to be presented before we go on with our evening. Um, it's been the practice of New Life Assembly of God to submit to our state and our national laws since the very onset of this pandemic, and of course, honestly, throughout our history. The restrictions have been a challenge, and they've caused us to constantly adjust our service schedules, our venues, our practicalities of ministry. And as the months have dragged along, We've done everything from online from a bedroom in a house to the rooftop of the entryway to a backyard flatbed and finally to a multi-service platform back here in the sanctuary. Last Sunday we were given a new mandate from our governor that on a whole didn't really change many things for us as we'd already been following masks and distancing mandates. It did, however, bring one new requirement other than had already been given. And the requirement was that a congregation is now expected to disallow corporate singing. While we want to be protective of those that are vulnerable, which is why we have done everything that has been asked of us to this point. We also feel a biblical command to sing and to encourage one another. The Apostle Paul wrote this. He said, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your heart to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Therefore, while we do not want to encourage anyone to knowingly rebel against our state laws, we also do not want to in any way infringe on the right of individuals to worship Jesus in a biblical manner. So why will we, we will still direct our congregation to wear the masks. We'll still direct them to socially distance. We will not be asking our congregants to refrain from singing. Now we encourage each of you to worship the Lord as you feel would be most honorable to him, whether singing or whether silently contemplating the greatness of our God. So we just want you to know that up front because there will be music tonight. We will be following the directives as far as leading music, as far as uh, having a soloist and those things. This will be the one area where you have the freedom to choose what you do. I'd like to spend a moment now praying before we go on, and I'd like to pray for our government leaders because they're really having a hard time even knowing what to do. And it would be really easy for us to get frustrated with them. But this is a very, very difficult thing that they're working with. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, this evening is about giving you thanks. Your word says that we're to give you thanks in all circumstances. That this is your will. And God, as difficult as the days have been, as challenging as many things have been, you 
have been and will always remain faithful. And we give you thanks for that. We pray for our governor. We pray for our legislature. We pray for our president, our Congress. God, you see the challenges that they face. You see the difficult decisions that they're trying to make. I pray you would grant them grace. I pray you would grant them wisdom. And God, I pray for our nation that we would find the way through this. And Lord, tonight as we offer our praise to you, I pray that each and every one would do it with a pure heart. And God, that you would be blessed by the overall expression of worship from your people. We ask that in Jesus' name. Amen. out of Psalm 136, and it starts out this way, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures for the sun to govern the day. His love endures forever the moon and the stars to govern the night. His love endures forever. To him who struck down the first 
born of Egypt, his love endures forever and brought Israel out from among them. His love endures forever. With a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. And brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the desert, his love endures forever. Who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Sion, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. And gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel. His love endures forever. To the one who remembered us in our lowest state, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. And who gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. The Bible gives us all kinds of descriptions of God's character. Um, He's able, alive, awesome, active, an anchor, amazing, artistic, almighty, alpha, abba, abundant, Amazing, available, approachable, avenger, advocate, author, beautiful, blessed, bright, builder, burden bearer, brave, bold, breaker of chains, beloved, breath of life, benevolent, bountiful, boundless, compassionate, comforter, conqueror, creator, courageous, companion, commander, Covenant keeper, caring, confident, chief, cornerstone, constant. Defender, deliverer, delight, divine, determined, door, discerning, everlasting, encourager, efficient, eternal, exalted, extraordinary, excellent, enlightening, essential, ever-present, ever-loving, father, faithful, friend, fair, forgiving, first, fountain, fortress, guard, good, generous, guide, glorious, gentle, gracious, guardian, great, gate, gatherer, healer, hiding place, Holy, hearer, hope, honorable, honest, helper, head, high priest, humble. You tired of this yet? Innocent, incomparable, intercessor, I am. Impartial, infinite, invincible, indestructible, incredible, instructor, immutable, immeasurable, intelligent, immortal, immovable, irresistible, involved. Emmanuel, judge, just, joyful, Jesus, jealous, jubilant, king, keeper, kind, knowing, Lord of lords, long-suffering, loving, listener, living, lamp, light, life, lamb, lion, last, leader, limitless, lovely, Magnificent, mighty, majesty, merciful, marvelous, master, meek, Messiah, miracle worker, maker, mediator, near, never failing, never ending, name above all names, noble, nice, nurturer, 
overcomer, omega, omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, one, only God, prince of peace, peace, praiseworthy, powerful, patient, perfect, perfecter, peacemaker, peaceful, protector, pierced, potter, preserving, pursuing, precious, pure, portion, personal, physician, quiet, quick, questioner, ruler, righteous, rock, refuge, reconciler, Refresher, restorer, rebuilder, redeemer, our rest, real, reason, ruler, restrained, radiant, reigning, resurrection, reliable, rescuer, strong, savior, sacred, son, shepherd, servant, salvation, sovereign, sacrificial, satisfying, sustainer, Stronghold, shield, shelter, selfless, sympathetic, sanctifier, spirit, trustworthy, tower, trinity, true, truth, truthful, triumphant, teacher, transcendent, treasure, unstoppable, unchanging, unshakable, understanding, upright, universal, unique, unlimited, virtuous, victorious, visionary, vine, voice, Valiant, vast, vindicator, wise, wonderful, worthy, worker, water, warrior, the way, the word, the winner, the wounded, and zealous. Yet even Isaiah told us that God can never be fully known. We can never grasp how great our God is or define him completely. And yet even in our lack of complete knowledge and understanding, we stand amazed and thankful for all that he is. Our night is going to follow a specific format of having a person come up and they're going to share some scripture and a testimony about the topic that they've been given. And then we'll give anyone else in the audience a chance, an opportunity to share a testimony that kind of fits in that area. We've chosen three areas. I'm in charge of the, I'm thankful to God for who he is. In a little bit, John's going to come up and he's going to be in charge of, I'm thankful to God for what he is doing in our world. And then Lynn will be the third one, and she's going to talk about how she's thankful to God for what he's doing in her life. And then between, we'll do some worship songs for you to worship God. We are in eternally grateful for our God, for who he is. So, with that in mind, Pastor Kevin's going to have a roving mic. And if you would like to share a testimony about how you are thankful to God for who he is, maybe even using some of those words, those descriptions that we already mentioned, then feel free. Just raise your hand and Pastor Kevin will come around with the mic. tired in a hurry. Yes, you are. Sorry. Lord is um, who he is, and it's something that he's been um, working on speaking to me and um, asking of me to do little things that grow me and stretch me and concern me, and um, <laughs> uh, he just kind of whispered to me this morning, you know, how much of a Lord am I if you're not being obedient? So... He's my Lord. Good. Good. Oh, we got people. I'm just thankful for his faithfulness. That through all this hard times and things that we're going through, he is faithful. 
and we can trust him with everything in our life because we know he is in control. I'm thankful he is my redeemer. Next month, it'll be, no, in January, 20 years that I've been living for the Lord. And he redeemed me out of a pit of hell and brought me into a new life. And I'm eternally grateful. Awesome. I'll catch you on my way back. I'm grateful for God's provision. Um, just always out there looking after me and making sure that I have what I need. Good. Good, good, good. Well, this spring when I had COVID and then I had vertigo and then I injured my back, um, Psalm 46 just came alive for me really when I had COVID and then it carried me through, which says, God is my refuge and my strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, I will not fear. And that's who he is to me. He is a place of refuge and he is very present through any trouble. We'll get one more and then we'll move into another section. And that's fine, you'll have plenty of chances to give a testimony. I think for me, um, the one word that keeps coming to mind is he's my constant. That even though things are up and down, up and down, he's always my constant. It's the thing that I can always go back to, to ground myself in whatever's going on that I can go back to. So I, I'm just thankful that he's my constant. Good. Excellent.
to your side So heaven is real And death is a lie I want to hear voices Of angels above Singing as one
All right, we're gonna transition to our next section and I'm gonna invite John Davis to come up and he's gonna stand up here and speak to you for a little bit. One foot in front of the other. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, this year I don't think it was like any of us planned. And, and those kind of things, you know, we get our set patterns and those things can really, really shake us up. But I'm here tonight to tell you that God is still in control. God is still on the throne. Um, a few years back, I, you know, when I was in a service, they kind of taught us, you know, they, they, over and over, they said, men, cut off your head, your body can go forever. You know, just, you know, and you're indestructible, nothing's going to stop you. And although I, I rejected that mindset intellectually, I didn't act that way. And I think as, as a young person, I think we kind of all kind of think we're, we're somewhat indestructible. And time, gravity has a way of getting a hold of us and, and saying, well, maybe not so much. A couple of years ago, uh, they started, you know, uh, you know like I, looking at my body and, and I've got hair where it doesn't belong and hair where it should be and not there. And um, lo and behold, the doctors are starting to want to cut on me and do weird things and finding things, you know, that they call cancer. And you kind of take a, a step back and you say, okay, uh, <laughs> things are coming along a little quicker than maybe I thought. And, um, and then, you know, this year sh shows up and, and toward the end of, of March, I, um, and, uh, and there was a couple of days there that, that I wasn't sure I was going to make it. And I, I just really, really thank you for all of your prayers and, and bringing us out of that. Uh, or, 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 you know, God intervening. And, and, you know, and I mean, Twyla didn't even have a symptom. So, praise God. Um, there's a couple of scriptures that I want to read for you. First one is Psalms 33, 4 through 11. And it says... For the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathers the waters of the sea into the jars. He puts the depths into storehouses. Let all of the earth fear the Lord. Let all the people of the world Revive him. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord foils the plans of the nation. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever. The purposes of his heart through all generation. Um, I have a video of... Uh, of, of some of our, our, our missionaries, the, the Lashways, who are uh, um, in charge of a large section of Africa um, called the uh, Swazili uh, Zone. And uh, it encompasses about seven, ten countries in um, southern, eastern Africa. And um, if you wanted to play that video, well. Greetings from East Africa. It has been quite a year, hasn't it? It's hard to believe, but in March we were hosting a missions team in Rwanda and kept hearing about the worldwide spread of the new coronavirus. By the end of those 10 days, we were grateful to barely get home to Tanzania before the world shut down. Little did we know the enormous impact that this coronavirus was going to have on all of our lives. It was during this same time that the Lord was speaking to our hearts about leaving Tanzania and launching a new mission team in either Uganda or Burundi. We have not had teams in either of these countries for many years, and both national churches were reaching out for missionary engagement. In the end, we felt the Holy Spirit's prompting to lead a team to re-engage with the church in Burundi. And at the same time, we prayed that the Lord would lead the right people to launch a team into Uganda. Fast forward eight months, and we are excited to let you know that we have five other missionary units coming out to join our team in Burundi, and there are now three units that are coming out to launch a team into Uganda. While we were waiting, God was working. 
It is so amazing that while the world was shut down, the Lord continued to call workers into the harvest of East Africa. Several of us hope to be on the ground in Burundi in time to celebrate Thanksgiving. Speaking of Thanksgiving, we want to give thanks to God for His faithfulness. While 2020 may not have been the year that any of us planned, God is ever working and building His church. Happy, Happy Thanksgiving! Thanksgiving. You know, we have all of our plans, but um, the scripture says that unless the Lord builds the house, the laborer labors in vain. Um, you know, God gets it done, and, and we have the privilege sometimes of being on his team and working with him. But just thank you so much. A couple of years ago, well, let me, there's a song um, out by uh, Paul Balash on his album, uh, Behold Him. And it's called, I Am Thankful. And the, um, the chorus goes, the sun, not, the sun does not withhold its light. The sea does not withhold the tide. You won't hold your, withhold your love. And I, I am thankful. The moon will not forget to rise. The stars will not forget to shine. You won't forget to love me, Lord. And I, I am thankful. For all you've done, I am thankful. For all you do, I am thankful. For all you are, I am thankful for you. Thank you. 
final section tonight is about how we are thankful to God for what he's doing in our lives. So be thinking about what testimony you'd like to share with that. I'm going to invite Lynn Justman up and she's going to share with you. so I'm better off moving around and than standing. Um, God does miracles every day, and we don't see them because they take place in people's hearts. And I'm one of those people. I have so much to be thankful for. I've been a Christian for 42 years, and God still is at work. It's kind of sad that he still has to work on me after all that long time, but I guess some of us are a little more hard-headed than others. So I want to share a story with you that started this new wave of what God is doing in my life. Excuse me. I told Alex I'd be doing this. I warned him. So bear with me. Um, last spring, when COVID, the pandemic first started, it was so hard. You remember, everything was locked down, almost like now, but a little worse. You couldn't be in church. I missed church so terribly bad. I missed being at the altar. I missed hugging people and shaking hands, just like you. I'm sure you're feeling what I'm feeling, too. 
but I, I also was shut away from my students, which I love to be with. I love working with kids. And so I was really bummed out. This is the end of April. Excuse me. <sighs> Get a hold of myself. So the end of April, about the 30th or so, I was in my room where I was working on schoolwork. And Art hollered at me from across the house. And he said, Lynn, there's a, a kitten that's running past our house, and it's, it looks terrified. Something must be chasing it, and it's really tiny, and it's scared. I've never seen it before, and it ran into the barn. So Art knows me. I love cats and kittens. I love all animals, but especially cats. So I jumped up out of my chair, got my coat on, and ran outside, went into the barn, and looked. Nothing. So I called, kitty, 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 and out from behind the haystack came a little tiny, frail, afraid, shivering, skinny, starving cat that looked like it hadn't been near anybody for at least a week. And it came and it looked at me. And I called it and kept trying to coax it near, and it finally came up to me. It chose to trust me and came up, and I picked it up, and I held it, and I talked to it, and I stroked it, and then I put it back down, and I went into the house to get some milk and some tuna fish. So I went back out to the barn and gave him the food. Now, the back story to this is I've always had cats as a child, and I loved them, and they were my favorite pets. But somewhere along the way, I developed allergies to cats. So I hadn't been around cats that much other than the barn cat, which usually just hisses and eats their food and then runs off. And, and so I, I, I really missed having a pet that I loved. And so for years and years and years, I never had cats other than just stray ones that wandered in and out. So this was a big deal to me that this cat came up to me and trusted me. So I petted him and talked to him and held him for a little bit, always keeping the same jacket on so I wouldn't get fur inside my clothes. And then when I was done, I went in the house and washed my hands so that I wouldn't have the sneezes and the sniffles and all that. So I thought to myself, this cat could just be passing through, so I'm not going to get attached. Because cats do that around our place. People drop cats off all the time because we have a farm. And so they, they think, oh, there's a farm. They've got a barn with mice, so we're going to drop off our cats. And we've had cats come and go all the time. So I, I just thought, this little cat, I'll feed him as long as he's here. I'll take care of him, and then if he goes, that's the way it is. So the next day, I went out, and I called the cat again, and he came out. And I fed him again, and I held him close for a little bit, and I petted him and talked to him. And then I let him go again, and I went back into the house. The following morning, this was day three, I, got, I was in my little office, and I had to Zoom with a student at that time because, again, we were closed down, and kids were, we were working over the Internet to talk to kids. And I was sitting in my little um, room, and I had my computer up against the wall, and then just above it was a window where I could see out. And so I was talking to this student and sharing the lesson and so forth, and pretty soon I heard it, meow outside the window. And so I just finished my Zoom, got it finished and ended it and shut the computer. And then I looked out the window and there was that little cat and he had heard my voice. He'd followed me. He followed my voice. He was looking for me and he followed my voice and was sitting down below the windowsill where I was. He wanted to be near me. And so again I went out, talked to him, fed him, went back in the house. The next morning I, I was in my room again, getting my schoolwork started, and I wasn't talking to anybody. I didn't have a Zoom at that time. And the cat, I saw him walking by, and he stopped below the window. He couldn't see me, but I could see him. He stopped below the window, and he waited. And he didn't hear my voice, so he moved on. And he went to the next window, and I was looking through the pane at the end of the house going this way, and he stopped at the next window. And he just waited and t listened, and no one was there. So he stopped at the final window on that side of the house. And I, I thought, well, that's really interesting. What a smart cat. How would he know how to do that? So I walked across the house to where Art was in our sunroom, 
And I started talking to him about what this cat was doing. And so by that time, the cat came around the other side of the house doing the same thing. And he heard my voice again, only at a different room. And he came and he stood outside of the, of the window and started to meow because he could hear my voice. He was calling to me. He knew where I was. And so I thought that, what a smart cat. And this, is, this cat might just stick around. Maybe I better think about a name. So I spent a little bit more time with him, and I'd go out and put my same jacket on and zip it up so I wouldn't get any cat fur on me. And then I brought a towel, and I sit, sat a chair out there, and I'd sit in a chair with the towel over my legs just to protect my clothing because I don't want to change my clothes five times a day. So, and he'd sit on my towel, and I'd pet him and talk to him and take care of him. And so at the end of the week, after he'd been there about a week, one day, that, well, that was the, the, the seventh day, I came out, and he had left a gift at the back door. It was a dead teenage gray digger. And so I looked at that, and I thought, this cat is starting to own us. Because if you know cat behavior, they give gifts to the people that they belong to, and they provide for them. So at that time, I thought, OK, I need to name this cat, because I think he's here to stay. And so I named him Barnabas from Acts, son of encouragement. And because he really encouraged me during this time, it was so hard. Do you remember? Do you remember how it is now? But it was really hard then because it was new to us. And so I felt very encouraged by this little cat. And I was really getting attached to him. And pretty soon my kids started hearing about him because that's all I talked about half the time was Bar I named him Barnabas. So I called Barnabas did this. And Barnabas left a mouse on the doorstep again and told my kids these stories. And my grandkids would, when they talk on the phone, would say, what did Barnabas do now, Grandma? And, and I'd send little pictures of him. And so Barnabas was truly an encouragement and a gift because he left gifts for us. And the greatest, one of the biggest gifts he ever left, besides mice and, and a lizard once, and, and the gray digger, was one day I went out and where I sit in my chair, there was two chairs out there, Art and I sit outside and we, we like to drink our tea or our coffee out there when it's nice. And so he had left a big brown snake bigger than himself and a mouse right beside it. I don't know how he got them both the same time, but he, he had a mouse and a snake. And I think that those two were partners, but they both lost. So um, Barnabas was also polite. He somehow, I don't know how he knew this, but he, he, I think he sensed that he wasn't supposed to be crawling in my lap, like a lot of cats like to do. And he sensed that he wasn't supposed to wrap around my legs, which annoys me because when you're trying to bring groceries in and a cat does that to you, you almost trip. So he just seemed to know that. He, he wasn't annoying like that. He was very polite, and he, he would sit beside my chair out there instead of trying to sit in it with me. And he, he kept his distance out of respect for what my needs were. Barnabas was also, um, he just wanted to be where I was. He became like a little shadow. And he followed me everywhere. If I'd come outside, the minute I came out, that back door opened, he'd be there looking for me like a dog would. And he'd follow me out to the garden. It was now May, early May, and I was starting to dig things and plant seeds. Well, Barnabas would come and, and sit beside my legs, but not in the dirt, but right near me and not in the way. And I'd be digging, and he'd just sit there and purr and look at me. And then I'd move down the row, and he'd move down the row with me. We'd be moving like this, side by side. Everywhere I went, Bar Barnabas went. So you can tell I was really, you know, pretty happy about this little gift. And um, if I sat in my chair, he sat under the chair. He, he liked Art, too, but I think he sensed Art's not a cat person. He never has been a cat person. So Barnabas kind of left him alone. And he'd sit under my chair and just sit there and purr. And we'd drink our coffee and talk, and there he was. And if I hung my laundry, he'd, he'd hang out by my laundry bucket till I was finished. And then he'd follow me to the door. And as soon as we got to the door, he knew I'm not supposed to go in the house. I don't know how he knew that, but he never tried to get in the house. He just stopped. And he'd go back to the barn or back to the yard. Um, so I'd kind of like to show you uh, some pictures of Barnabas. Um, I sent them to Alex 
And it's really short. There's only like six or seven. So bear with me. picture of how friendly and loving he was. Well, my heart really was attached to, to uh, Barnabas. And so by this time, we'd had Barnabas for three months. It was the end of July. And um, one day I went out, and Barnabas wasn't there. He didn't greet me at the door. And I looked and looked, and he wasn't anywhere. And I called him, and he didn't come. The next day, same thing. I went outside and there was no Barnabas. I looked everywhere. Barnabas wasn't there. Barnabas was gone. And so at about that time, I, I sensed the Lord say to me, Lynn, I want you to love me as much as you love that cat. I want you to have a relationship with me like you have with that cat. And so I really had to think about that and work through that. And isn't that true today for all of us? We all need to follow the Lord every day, like Barnabas followed me every day. We all need to look for where God is every day, like Barnabas looked for me. We need to listen to his voice, like Barnabas listened for mine. And we need to, to look for the gifts that God gives us because he loves us. And, and that's, that's the lesson I learned and am still learning, that I wasn't truly, fully, 100%, vitally, daily loving God like he wanted to be loved. And it's not just me. It's every one of us. There's so much more that we can reach out and take from God in our relationship so I just encourage you to do that. Okay, here are the verses that I was given to read. 2 Corinthians 4, 17 to 18. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. In Psalm 118, 13 to 21, I was pushed back and about to fail, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has chastened me with severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Thank you, Lynn. We're going to now give you an opportunity to share what God's doing in your life. So if you have a testimony you'd like to share about that, just raise your hand, and Pastor Kevin will bring the mic around. Well, I got this dog. <laughs> oh, um, I am just uh, really grateful. I do have a dog. His name's Oscar. Yeah. Oliver. <laughs> 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 He's kind of a grouch. 
I, I am uh, I'm really grateful for a lot of things, but as far as my personal life, um, these five down here have learned a lot from this last year. They came to stay for six weeks, and they're here still. That was last year. So, um, I'm grateful for COVID. I'm grateful for President. I'm grateful for the awareness that he has uh, given to myself and to numerous other people that I've been in fellowship with uh, to uh, enrich and to, to prompt us to search the scriptures and look for uh, God's provision. And he has done so much for our family this last year. Um, I'm almost embarrassed to say that, you know, when there's so many people hurting, I'm enjoying this benefit of getting a shop that I've been wanting to do for about 20, 25 years. <clears throat> and now I'm getting it uh, built. And I'm grateful for a number of men in this uh, congregation that have helped me out at different times and um, moving on with that project. And it's just a material thing, but it's, it's something that... Um, it, it will meet not just my immediate family's needs, but those of others as I am able to, to work within this shop that I'm, I'm building. Just finished putting on the roof of it today. So, yeah, little milestones. Um, but uh, God is, uh, has been so merciful and, and gracious to Marsha and I, and I'm just so pleased that um, we are back fellowshipping again. Thank you for your faithfulness and your leadership. And I just ask that we would uh, continue to move and be tuned in to one another's needs and, and uh, what we can do for one another. Thank you, Lord. I think it has given me a greater appreciation for friends and family, people that you are in your life that you don't get to see as much of now with the separation and so forth. And so we did get together for our family reunion this year, not the one we'd planned because that got canceled by the park, but an impromptu weekend came together and my family got to get together enough that we could visit back and forth a little bit and we all realized how much we appreciate the fact that we have family and then we can meet together still. And we all realize how important it is to, to keep in touch with one another and to just cherish those that you have because you never know when you won't have them. So that was. Um, I'm very thankful also for my in-laws because I know I try to touch it. <laughs> um, Mark's taught me so many good things. He's been a father when I haven't had one. And he's modeled what a godly man should do. I'm also thankful that God is an observer. That like a patient father, he allows me to make the mistakes. And then times it just right for me to learn from them correctly. And then I'm also very thankful that this year it's been trying I've been blessed with a beautiful and gracious wife. And then even restoring a relationship with my mother. I mean, I haven't really had good conversations with her. And if anybody knows that story between my mom and dad, it didn't end very well. And that just over time through many prayers and just being patient, and just allowing God to work in that, that we're restoring, we're on the road to res restoration. And I'm just very thankful for that. I have a just a gracious family and a wonderful church. Anyone else? Last chance.
the Lord's patience with us. Um, and I think these times of difficulty, I, I'm just amazed at how he uses that to teach us. Um, I, I think one of the things when all this started that surprised me the most um, was just how much I needed to grow in certain areas. I, I thought I was doing pretty well with some things and realized when um, it was really tested that I, I had a lot of growth that needed to <laughs> take place. And I think one of the, the biggest ways that God has taught me, and it, it was in one of the verses, don't set your mind on earthly things, but set your, set your, fix your eyes on things that are eternal. And, and God has just taught me to fix my eyes on him. He is the only one that I need to please. He's um, the only one that's going to truly be my source for everything that I need. And um, we were talking on Wednesday night Bible study um, about God being our Father, um, but specifically our our Abba Father. And we kind of just Brian just really. Um, challenged us to think about, you know, do you, do you see God as your, your Abba, that, that um, very intimate term for God, Abba. It was one of the ones that um, Alex had in his alphabetical. That was an awesome list, by the way. <laughs> that was really inspiring. Um, and, you know, I had to really think about that because I, sometimes people liken that word to um, calling your father daddy. And I was not a daddy's girl. I, it wasn't a term that was used in my household. Um, well, maybe when I was really young, I don't remember. But my, my dad was dad. And uh, that thought of daddy is just a little bit foreign to me. But as I really considered it, I thought, you know, that relationship I have with God, you know, I, I kind of have different relationships with people just depending on how close I am with them whether they're an acquaintance or a closer friend that I can feel more vulnerable with, or my best friend, my husband, that I really, you know, allow to see the, the really ugly parts of me. Um, but God is the only one that I really feel that such an intimacy that I can just have my soul bare before him. And because I know he loves me. His love endures forever. And he's patient. And he's kind. And he is good. And so I can keep my eyes fixed on him. And he will lead me in the path that he has for me. Hopefully I don't have to sing. <laughs>
is running after, it's running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give you everything. Your goodness is running after, it's running after.
Well, I thank you all for being here tonight. I want to uh, say a special thank you to Pastor Alex, who really spent the bulk of the time putting this evening together, and to all of our musicians for covering so much of the the other side of things there, and our technical group as well. If you're online, uh, it wasn't Mitch's fault. The uh, internet went down for a few minutes. Nothing we could do about it. But there's a lot of things it takes just even for a night like this. And just, I, I thank each one of you that have been involved in that part of it. And then I also want to thank all of you that came tonight and all of you that attended online as well. Um, I, I've thought long and hard about all of this stuff. And one of the, one of the pictures I keep getting is, is uh, the Grinch who stole Christmas. And please don't extrapolate that out to an individual. I'm not saying that. But here's the part I remember, is after all of the rest of the stuff, when all of the pudding and the pies and the trees and the gifts and all the stuff disappeared, all of the little who's in Whoville still came out and they sang their song of gratitude as God's people it's not just about all the stuff. It's not all the events. It's not all the this, all of that. It's him. And regardless of any of the rest of it, he is worthy of all the praise. And he's worthy to give thanks to for all that he's done for us. And we are a blessed people. And we are a blessed people. I want to just close in prayer and just bless you tonight. Lord, you see this people. And Lord, you know their heart for you. God, you've told us when we pray that we're to go into our closet and pray to you who are in secret. And that you who see in secret will reward openly. Lord, I know that there have been many that have just been bombarding heaven in the hiddenness of their closets. And God, we want to thank you in advance because we believe not only you have answers, but you're bringing answers. I pray for some of our community, our church community that is hurting tonight, some who are feeling very isolated, I thank you, God, that you cut through all the walls, all of the other things, and you are in the midst of your people. You live in our lives. And I pray that each of these would just have a very special sense of your presence right now. God, for some who this time has just been so difficult, they've been having issues physically, emotionally, other ways. God, you're our peace. You're our healer our restorer, our help, our strength, our blessing. And we thank you for that. And we ask you to meet those needs in their lives. Your word also says the joy of the Lord is our strength. And God, I pray that you would infuse us with a joy. Not a joy based on all of the circumstances working out right. Not a joy just by the sun shining and the birds singing, but a joy because we are yours. And you will never leave us or forsake us. We have an eternal hope in you. And I pray that that joy would remain and that we would steadfastly and passionately pursue you all the days of this life. Now I ask you to bless this church, each member, each congregant. Lord, just fill them with more of your spirit. And we just thank you for the goodness of God. To you be the praise and the glory today, tomorrow, and forevermore. Amen. 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 So we're going to go out just with a song of thanks.
Have a wonderful night. Thank you.